Good morning, Grace Church. Good to see everyone here this morning. All right, is everybody ready to worship the Lord? That's what you came here for, right? To meet with the Lord? Yeah? All right. Can you join us?
Christ this morning? Church. So how many guys are enjoying this hot weather? You know what, I'd say I'm not going to complain because I'd rather have this than snow. So let's pray this together this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, we just praise you this morning, Father. God, we thank you for being here with us, God. We thank you for your, your uh, son this morning. Thank you for the blood of Jesus that washes away every sin. God, we thank you for loving us this morning, God. Lord, we just invite you to have your way this morning in us and in this, in this service this morning, God. We, we just pray that you would guide and direct everything, God. We pray that your will would be done, God, that your kingdom would come, God, that your glory would come, God, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit in this place today. God, I pray that each person would experience and encounter you today, God, that each of us would hear your voice speaking to us today, Lord. Lord, give us ears to hear today. Give us eyes to see clearly, Father. Give us hearts to receive all that you have for us, Lord. And God, we just pray that you would be exalted in this place today, God, that you would be honored, that you would be well-pleased to dwell with us this morning, God. We love you, Lord. We love you. We worship you. We praise you, Lord. You are worthy of our praise this morning, God. You are worthy to be worshipped. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Jesus. Amen. Amen. You guys may be seated. We're going to cover some announcements quick, and we're going to get back into worship this morning. I just want to thank you guys for your faithfulness in giving your tithes and offerings. And I just want to pray for those this morning. Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness to us, God. And we thank you for the privilege of giving, God, even giving sacrificially. God, giving obediently. God is an act of worship. And so, Lord, we give you our tithes, our offerings this morning, God. Ask for your blessing on them. You would just continue to guide and direct this church, God, wherever you want that to be spent. To glorify you and to build your church. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so this morning, I uh, just want to let you know that summer life groups are going to be starting in a few weeks, and actually some of them have already started, but uh, there's a list in your bulletin today of just the start of some of them, so we're going to be promoting them this week and next week, and so if you would still like to host a small group, you can still get in on, the, on this menu, and these are going to be starting the week of the 20th, and so uh, just real quick, on Wednesday night, we have the Constitution Alive class, which actually has already started. Uh, but if, you, if you've missed that, uh, there is going to be another one starting on the 23rd. So th just down below that at Steve Bridge, Stephen Dale Bridges' house in Belleville. And the date on that I have is wrong. It's not the 20th. It's actually the 23rd. So if you'd like to learn more about the Constitution, man, this is just an amazing class uh, to learn about the Constitution and God's involvement in all of this. And so I actually wish I could go through it. I am busy on Wednesday nights, but I'm going to... Probably have to go through it on my own, but uh, encourage you guys to, if you're available, to check that out. There's also going to be a men's small group 
on that night as well. There's some details coming. But on Thursday night, um, as usual, we'll have our uh, Bible school class. We've been running this for almost six years now. We've only got two more classes left. Um, and three of our people, Robin uh, Feller, Steve Bridge, and my wife, will be licensed um, by the end of the year. So, yeah. So the class we have for this summer is it's an intermediate internship class, really, and it's really geared toward those who have been involved for these last six years. And uh, you can read through it. If it interests you at all, you can talk to me about that, though. But there's another one coming on Thursdays. Uh, uh, Brad and Sarah McCarthy are going to be leading a group in Monroe. And actually, dinner and child care is going to be provided. Yeah. So they're going to be studying 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John. It's actually a study uh, done by Dr. Tony Evans. So it looks pretty good if you want to read through that, get some more details. Um, that's going to be in Monroe at 6 o'clock starting on the 24th. Then we also have, of course, our uh, Saturday morning prayer group. And Sunday morning, the Zoom Bible study. Those are ongoing small groups. So anyways, these are some of the small groups that are going on. I know there's some others that are going on that aren't listed here, kind of private groups. But uh, just want to encourage you guys to get plugged in during the week and uh, get connected on a deeper level. So I encourage you to look through those and just pray where the Lord may want you to get plugged in. So today after church at 12 o'clock, we're going to have Synergy. Uh, synergy, as you guys know, is a time of worship and prayer. And so if you are hungry for more, I want to encourage you to join them today at 12. And um, yeah, so it's usually twice a month. So the fourth Sunday of the month, they have it and now they're um, experimenting with after church. So as I know some of you guys can't make it on, on in the evening. So anyways, today from 12 to 1.30, they'll be meeting for a time of worship and prayer. The Women of Grace have a meeting coming up next Saturday. Angie, do you want to say anything about that? All right. Okay, come on up. Okay, so the good news is, yes, it's um, this Saturday. It's from 3 to 4.30. The wisdom will be easy to find. You can come here. However, finding a parking spot is probably going to be a bit tricky. It happens to be beer, brats. Beer, beer bacon, and cheese. Oh, beer, bacon, and cheese. And, and the polka. Oh, and Polka Fest. So come early to find a parking spot. You're probably going to have to look around the surrounding community, but it'll be worth it. I'm bringing Perkins Pie, and I have six ladies who are going to share just their wisdom that they've received from the Lord over the years, and I'm super excited. So don't let the car issue stop you. Yeah. Sounds good. I'm hoping for some leftover pie. So uh, the Young at Heart group also has a, uh, an event happening next Sunday after church. They're having a potluck some ice cream, and it sounds like they're playing some games and cards and stuff afterwards. So if you are 50 and older, you are welcome to join them. Uh, coming up June 27th, we have a new members class luncheon. So if you're new to Grace, uh, relatively new, if you've never been to one of our new members classes, I want to encourage you to join, join us next uh, Sunday. Please sign up at the Welcome Center. So this is really a time for you guys to get to know us better. You'll learn a little bit more about what we believe, who we are, what our uh, structure here looks like, and you'll get to ask any questions, and we get to learn a little bit more about you. So if you've never been to one, we want to encourage you to, to join us. We'd also like to do a baptism that Sunday as well. If you've not been baptized yet, we encourage you to talk to one of the pastors. We would love to, to baptize you. i got one person who's interested already. So uh, if you have any questions about it, you can, you can come and see me. I'd love to, to talk with you about that. Uh, so on your calendars, this is in your bulletin, you want to mark July 4th. If you're going to be around, if you're not doing anything, there is a ice cream, social, and fireworks going on at the Wickstrom home, and that'll start at 8 o'clock. So uh, if you haven't been out to their, their firework display, it is quite amazing. It's like a finale the entire time. <laughs> so, and I was involved in lighting uh, last year for... I th I don't know if it was for the youth or what, but it's very crazy and a little dangerous, but it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Got fireworks going across your head, and I had something last year. It came and landed on my, on my shoulder bone. It really hurt, but uh, I didn't get burnt, so that's good. Speaking of the Wickstroms, Pete, please be praying for Pastor Don. So he's gone uh, this weekend. He'll be gone a lot this month. As you know, uh, on June 27th, he'll be racing up Pikes Peak. 
And so um, if you haven't seen his car, you can check it out on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. He get some videos out there. So uh, pray for him, for his safety and success. I'd like to see him break a record. But more importantly, to get up there and get up there safely. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about some updates on Herman. So Herman was released from the hospital. He was in the New Glarus home, and now he's back in the hospital. He's got some pneumonia, some stuff going on with his lungs. So please be praying for him. And also Carl Krantz. I went and saw him yesterday, and um, he's got some issues with his, his lungs as well. So please be praying for them as well. Uh, the, the baby bottles, the fundraiser for CareNet, those are due on Father's Day. So you got a couple weeks to fill those up and get those in. And then I had another announcement, a last-minute announcement come to me last night or yesterday. So Tim and Meg, you guys want to wave your hand over there? They are inviting all of you to an outdoor concert in their backyard next Saturday. Um, it's not the same time as the women's ministry, so it's from 6.45 to 7.45. And... Sounds very, it's a, star, they're called Stargrass Band. So these are uh, young, I was looking at the pictures, they're little, young kids, right? They're about 10 to, three siblings, ages 10 to 14, and I left a bunch of flyers up. Oh, good, thank you. So this is an Irish Celt grass, bluegrass American band. <laughs> so. And uh, I will, we'll be sending out an email so you can have the, this information with their address and thing. So thank you, for, thank you for inviting everybody. Yeah. All right. Would you guys stand with me? We are going to go back into worship at this time.
are so excited that our Savior lives, right? But we have a God who cares for us. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. That you came, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood that washes away our sins. But the blood of Jesus, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, no other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus, what can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the foe that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the foe that makes me white as snow. No. But the blood of Jesus, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood. But the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus and all he's done for us, we should be filled with thankfulness and gratitude. Again and again, because all that I have is. 
just take a moment just to praise the Lord with our own words. You know, it's, it's one thing to praise Him with a song. It's another thing to praise Him just from your own heart, in your own words. So let's just take a moment. He is so worthy of our praise and our worship. You can do it quietly. If you want to lift your voice, you can praise Him. You can worship Him aloud. Hallelujah. Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy. Worthy is the Lamb who is slain. Hallelujah. Father, you are worthy. We praise you, Lord. Holy Spirit, we praise you. You are worthy, God. Thank you for loving us, God. You are good. You are good. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for your presence here, Lord. just pray this morning that you'd help us to receive from your word, God. That our lives would be changed radically. God, that we would be conformed into your likeness this morning. God, by your spirit and by your word, God.
Sanctify us, Lord, by the truth. God, your word is truth. Hallelujah. Father, I pray for Glenn this morning, God. Give him your thoughts. Give him your words. Holy Spirit, speak through him. Empower him, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord, we pray for the, the power, the strength, the grace to be doers of your word, God, to remember what we hear this morning, not leave and forget it. But Lord, help us to remember and put it into practice, God. So Lord, we commit the time of hearing your word to you, God. In Jesus' name, may you be exalted. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Well, we are blessed this morning to have one of our overseers with us. So for those of you who don't know our government structure, uh, part of our, our government structure is we have overseers, which are outside ministers and pastors um, who really who, who are called upon if the lead pastor, myself, would ever get into some trouble, uh, doctrinally, financially, or morally, and uh, hope that never happens. Um, but anyways, we have them, right? So uh, your senior pastor is held accountable, and uh, so it, if there was ever an incident, the, one of the uh, elders would call upon them to come in, and they would come and um, do the investigation and take care of things. And uh, just helps for protection against church splits. And the church goes on and continues in a healthy way. So we are blessed to have um, Glenn Smith with us and his wife, Vicki. So uh, Glenn was a pastor at Metro Believers Church for many years and uh, other churches before that. But now they're uh, starting a, a, a ministry to pastors down in uh, Colorado Springs called Shepherd to Shepherd. And so, as he comes, let's give him a, a warm welcome. Thank you, Glenn. Good to have you guys with us. Thanks, John. Wow. Is this on? Well, oh, good morning. It's great to see everybody. And, uh, you know, I'm praying that somehow something that I share today will resonate in your heart and transform your lives. Um, how many of you know the Word of God has the power and the ability to do that? Amen? And so that's my prayer. I probably won't say anything today that you haven't already heard, just so you know, but I want to put you in remembrance of what the Word of God says <clears throat> so that you can continue to walk out the principles of Scripture, amen, and uh, live by them so that God can use you mightily, and not just marginally. So often we live our Christian lives um, by just sort of going through the motions, and we get lazy with the spiritual principles of Scripture, and as a result of that, I think the enemy marginalizes us, and kind of puts us in a neutral zone or barely making a difference. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I want to make a huge difference for the kingdom of heaven. Amen? And so Vicki and I love this church. Uh, we, we've been a part of this church for many years in, in a, an overseeing kind of way. I remember when we first moved to Madison to plant Metro Believers Church. It was 2001, and uh, your pastor, Pastor Roger, back then, um, welcomed us to town. Um, I had a good friend in Colorado Springs, um, and he was on our board, and your pastor um, loved that ministry and would go out to conferences there, and we, we, we connected right away. There was a, not only that connection, but there was a divine chemistry between us, and uh, I, I just loved his heart. We, we spent... Uh, 20 years in relationship before he got to go home and to be with the Lord. And uh, I don't know about you, but I miss him dearly. And, uh, but you know what? He's rejoicing with his Savior. And uh, it blesses my heart, just so you know, to see this church um, not only surviving, but thriving. And, and for all that you've gone through, 
um, with losing um, sort of the founding pastor, at least the first pastor of this church, um, and then going through COVID. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Um, and to see this place full like it is today, and uh, my, it blesses my heart. It does my heart well. To, I know that Pastor Roger would be thrilled to see um, this place full of people rejoicing and loving the Lord and loving each other. Amen. Uh, well done, Grace Church. Well done. And so, I don't know about you, but... Uh, I know that pastors take a lot of heat. I don't know if you know that or not. Maybe you think that over the last year or so, your pastors have just had it so easy. Because you know the pandemic and all, you know. You know oftentimes, it couldn't even meet, right? So he just stayed home, you know, sipping on lemonade with his feet up. Uh, <laughs> uh, I know when I was here, we left in December, and I, I'll never forget that year, uh, 2020, um, was the, the toughest year of 40 years of ministry. Um, and it's, it took its toll, quite frankly. And it's taking its toll on a lot of pastors. Not, not, I mean, not only do you have the normal things of pastoral ministry that you deal with in general, but then the pan pandemic on top of that was just almost the straw that broke the camel's back in a lot of pastors' lives. So Vicki and I have felt called um, to take the 40 years of experience we have as pastors uh, in several cities and use it to help offload and help debrief and unpack a lot of what pastors have held on to and dealt with for many years. Most of the time, pastors suffer in silence. They're supposed to have it all together all the time. You know, well, you know they don't. <laughs> you fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> you know we don't, but um, we're supposed to. You know, you look to us for, for strength and resources and stability and, and all that kind of stuff anyway. Um, and we know that, that pastors have gone through it, and so we just have felt called to start Shepherd to Shepherd to help provide a place, a safe space for pastors in their spouses to come, and for no charge at all. Uh, we cover everything. That's all they have to do is get there, um, and so uh, we're doing that because we're, we're raising funds, and so if God leads you to support us, thank you. <laughs> you won't be supporting us, you'll be supporting them. But we're doing it in a way that way so that pastors don't have to have the financial burden of saying, can we go? Do we have the money? We want to do it completely covered so that they can just come and be taken care of, be fed, um, be loved on, be spoiled for a week at our place and just um, do something significant in their hearts. And so uh, your pastor and his wife, your lead pastor and his wife, along with the other pastors, may need to get away. So just encourage them to come see us in Colorado Springs, right? Um, and some of you may be able to see Don coming down the hill. <laughs> it's right down the street from our house. <laughs> we are right next to Pikes Peak, just so you know. Hey, how many football fans do we have here? Come on. You know, I mean, how many of you love the Green Bay Packers? How many of you love the Bears? How many of you love the Vikings? Come on. No, no, no. <laughs> because the church split here, John. <laughs> but I can blow in, blow up, and blow out. <laughs> yeah, so years ago, one of my favorite football players was a guy by the name of Jerry Rice. I don't know if anyone has ever heard of him or, uh, you know, maybe I'm dating myself, but a lot of you are at similar ages. But um, he was a former wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers. And Rice is remembered um, not only for being one of the greatest football players to ever play the game, but also for one of the hardest working football players to ever play the game. 
His work ethic was legendary. One of his famous quotes, and I want you to catch this today, was this. Today, everyone say today. Today, today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. All right? Today, everyone say today. today. I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. That's discipline. Amen? It's the ability to see beyond the now and to realize what it takes to get somewhere in the future. And so uh, that, that quote has stuck to me or with me for many, many years. And, you know, there are many people that think that the folks that make it in the NFL got there because it's just a matter of talent. And, uh, but how many of you know it's more than that? You know, it starts with talent. That's just one part of it. But talent is just the kernel, and hard work makes it grow. It's like talent is the starting point, but what are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that, see? And so there's one key word in this quote that I want you to catch, and that's the word today. Everyone say today. 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 See, today. It's that first word in the quote, today. Today, I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. See, creating a life that you want to live comes down to this one word. It really does. And that's what you choose to do with today. What you choose. Everyone say choose. It's a choice. Every day you have, you have choices to make. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with today? As a matter of fact, John Maxwell said this. He said, the secret to success is found in our daily routines. You know, a lot of people are looking somewhere out there, you know, looking for success to drop in their lap. But the secret to our success is found in our daily routines. What we do with today. That's why he wrote a book called Today Matters. And it's a powerful book. I um, encourage you to, to read it if you haven't. And here's what I found out, is that most people in this room and in the world expect to have a, a, a better future. They expect their futures to be better than, the, than it is now. But few people are doing anything to change that. They, they just sort of expect magically it's just going to happen. But few people are doing anything to change that. And I think it would be safe to say um, here today that, that every one of us want to have a good life. Amen? How many of you want to have a good life? Or, or, or a good day even, right? Uh, or a good year even, better than last. <laughs> but there are few people that really know what a good year or a good day or a good, uh, good life looks like. Um, much less how to create one. They just don't know how to do something to change their lives or change their day. And even fewer people understand that the way you live today impacts your tomorrow. Let me say that again. The way you live your today impacts your tomorrow. That's why today matters. And the secret, that's what I found out, pastoring for 40 years, I'd have people come up and say, Pastor, how do I have a great, how do I have a great year? How do I have a great life? The secret to having a great life is stringing a bunch of great days together. Did you hear me? It's stringing a bunch of great days together. And see, most people are focused on the wrong day. They're focused on yesterday, and they're focused on what? Tomorrow. They're not focused on today. When really the most important gift, everyone say gift, the most important gift that you and I possess is the next 24 hours right smack dab in front of you. That's really, really the most important day of your life is today. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with today? And so, you know, I've gone, I've gone through life where I've just had some great days and great years and seasons of life that were tremendous. And I've gone through seasons of life that I felt like a fish out of water flopping around on a deck somewhere, right? But the difference that I found was between those two comes down to the title of my message today 
And that's called the rhythm of life. Everyone say the rhythm of life. The, the rhythm of life. I want you to think about getting your life in tempo. I want you to think about making good music with your life. I, there's a, see, there's a rhythm to life. You know what I'm talking about. And you know, you know when your life's out of rhythm, right? Just like when you know a, a, a band or a musician is out of rhythm. It's, you just know it. It doesn't sound right. It doesn't work, right? And so I'm talking about really setting the tempo of your daily life and getting in the habit of doing the same thing, the right thing, over and over on a daily basis. Because when your life is in rhythm or when you're in the groove, your life begins to make good music. Amen? And so I like to call these not only the rhythm of life, but I like to call them the big rocks. Okay, big rocks. Everyone say big rocks. In other words, these are priorities, right? Um, you get the big rocks in first, and you can add a whole lot more in. I don't know if you've ever seen that illustration um, about priorities, okay? Probably have. Um, so these are the big rocks. And so I'm going to give you five big rocks today. Five big rocks. You all ready? I love some of your writing notes, and it's just awesome to see you hungry. And you know what? God can do something with a hungry person. Just remember that, okay? So let's talk about the five big rocks. These are priorities. These are principles. This is, these, this is about getting those five things in rhythm in your life on a consistent basis. The first, the first is the rhythm of gratitude. Like I told you before, I'm probably not going to talk about anything that you haven't heard before. But sometimes we let things slip. And I don't know about you, but that I have. I do. You know, I have it, and then I lose it. <laughs> and I go, what happened? And then I try to get back on track and get back in rhythm, right? Does anyone, can, can anyone relate to me? All right, am I the only one that's that bad? <laughs> All right, so the first one is the rhythm of gratitude. It's gratitude. It's, it all starts with an attitude of gratitude. It's so important for you to live your life out of a heart of gratitude and thankfulness. The psalmist said in, in Psalms 9.1, he said this, he said, I will give thanks to you. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all of my heart, and I will tell of your amazing deeds. And so here's the big idea around this rock, this principle, this rhythm is, is find something every single day when you get out of bed to be thankful for and then give thanks to the Lord for that on a continuous... Be thankful. Be thankful, you know, instead of being, you know, grumbling because you're in traffic, be thankful that you have a car. Are you hearing me? And how many of you know what I'm talking about? It's easy to go negative and be critical, say. And find, so find, I, and I know, listen, I know, me, for me, it's a challenge in, to grow up in, with a thankful heart. I, I grew up, I grew up in an environment, um, at an early age, was exposed to a culture of complainers and um, gripers and, you know, grumblers, critics, you know, it was always half empty, not half full. And so I was trained that way. I, I grew up in that environment. And if we're not careful, we'll just say, well, that's just the way I was brought up. That's just the way I was raised, you know. Instead of saying, you know what, the buck stops here. Amen. I'm not going to live my life like that anymore. I'm going to let the power of God transform my life. And I'm going to be someone who is grateful and thankful. Amen. See, see, a lack of gratitude is really the great, one of the greatest hindrances that people have today in experiencing all that God has for their lives. Because, because most people, instead of feeling grateful for what they have, often spend their energy obsessed on what they don't have. See. Obsessed by what they don't have. And uh, Years ago, there was a a, a survey done in Orange um, County, California. It's one of the most affluent areas in our nation, um, at least back then. 
And the question was asked, what do you need most in life? And what do you need more in life? And the number one response was, Mo money. <laughs> Mo money, right? These people already had more money than anyone else on the planet, but they had a need for more. I like to call it the monster of more. Because it is a monster. When you have to have more, you know, if that's, you're never satisfied, you know, it's like, uh, you know, my, my name is Jimmy, I'll take all you give me. <laughs> like, uh, give me, give me, I, I, give me, give me, I, right? <laughs> it, it, it really is the lack of contentment, right? It's a lack of contentment. It's the need for greed. It's not having an attitude of what? Gratitude. And it's interesting to me that in this land of plenty, we too often live our lives focused on what we don't have. We don't have enough money, we don't have enough time, you know, and, and we're just constantly grumbling and complaining about it. We don't have enough success or happiness. There's a song written way back when um, by uh, an author, I think it was Joni Mitchell, um, lyrics of the old song sum it up quite well that said, don't it always, help me finish this, don't it always seem to go that we don't know what we've got till it's gone. Man, I'm surrounded with people in my age group. <laughs> yeah. And the words of this song summarize the plight of so many people. You know, we don't really appreciate what we have until it's gone. And the more, listen, the more successful, the more affluent, the more blessed we become, the biggest challenge is to learn to appreciate it and to be thankful for all the good things that God sends our way. And listen, it's just like, it's just like Jerry Rice. He had, he had to focus on what he needed to do today. This is one of those things you need to learn how to do every day, is to have a thankful heart. Amen? And, and that's my goal today, is to encourage you to make gratitude a lifestyle. To become, you know, this is just part of your life. You're thankful. You're grateful. You're, 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 you're just so amazed at what God has done with you rather than looking at what you don't have. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, it says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart since you were members of one body and you were called to peace and be what? Thankful. Be thankful. Second, the second big rock. Second big rock is the, a rhythm. It's the rhythm of renewal. Rhythm of renewal. Let me explain what I'm talking about. One of the most important habits that a person can develop is the habit of is really starting each day the right way. All right? Starting each day the right day. Beginning right makes all the difference in the world in your day. See, God wants you and I to start each day with a clean slate. Did you hear me? With a renewed day. It's, when I say the, the, the rhythm of renewal, I'm talking about the newness of God in every day. See, He wants you to start. He wants to give you the gift. Hear me, hear me today. Someone needs to really hear this. He wants to give you the gift of a new day. Every day. It's called the gift of renewal. And so Lamentations Chapter 3, verse 22 says this, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Everyone say never. never. Think about what that means for just a moment. Never. The steadfast love of the Lord, what? Never. never ever. Ever ceases. His what? His mercies. I'm sorry, it's not up there. His mercy, <laughs> I thought you had it. His mercies never come to an end. They are, there we go, there we go. His mercies never come to an end. Next slide, if you have it. No, sorry. His mercies, Lamentations, if you have that, chapter 3, verse 22 and 23. All right, maybe not. All right, so his mercies never come to an end. They are, you could probably quote this, they are what? 
What? They're what? <laughs> They're new every morning. Did you hear me? Someone needs to hear this today. They're new every morning. See, God, God wants you to have the gift of newness. Did you hear me? Because some of you are walling around in yesterday. And you, you're, you are embarrassed or you're hurting. You have made mistakes. You've, you've failed. And you're walling around in it. And God's saying, you know what? You have a clean slate today. My mercies are new. Everyone say new. new. Are new every morning, and they never, ever, ever, ever come to an end. That means it's, it's still available for you. Did you hear me? It's still available for you. Great is your faithfulness, it goes on to say. See, this, this verse contains perhaps the most powerful scripture um, in the Bible. His mercies never come to an end, and they're new every morning. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Amen? Today is a new day. There you are. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. They're new every day. God's mercies are brand new. His love is absolutely rock solid and consistent. It's, it's, it's never ending. It's never changing. That means you have a clean slate. Amen? Amen? You have a clean slate. Listen, you, some of you are saying, well, I don't deserve. Listen, it doesn't, it's not based on what you deserve. It's not based on your goodness. It's based on his goodness. Go figure. <laughs> it's based on what he did at the cross, not what you did. Amen? It's new. It's a gift. And it's not based on your abilities. It's based on the fact that he wants us to come to him and experience the grace and mercy. Listen to Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Do you have that slide? Or maybe we've already gotten past that. Hebrews chapter yeah, 4, verse 16. Let us approach the throne of grace with what? With what? With confidence so that we may receive mercy, there it is again, and find grace to help in our time of need. It's, it's there for you. And, and, and you can come to him with confidence, knowing that his mercies are new every morning. Anyone ever remember the Etch-A-Sketch? <laughs> or the Eraser Slate? Remember that? One of them was the one you shook, right? And the other one you just pulled up, right? Okay. Well, God created that. Someone else just got the royalties. <laughs> yeah, that's, he was the originator of the Etch-A-Sketch, right? Right? His mercies are new every morning. That means you get a, a do-over every day. No, and some of you say, well, if you preach like that, you give people a license to sin. You don't need a license to sin. How many of you know that? <laughs> no, what you do is you give people the ability to know their God and be forgiven and be fresh every single day. Amen? And that's the way God wants you. But why? Because you do your best when you walk from a clean heart. You live your best. You live your best life now when you're not trying to deal with the guilt and the shame of yesterday. That's why. God wants you to have that. That's a gift. Amen? This is coming off me. Okay. And that's why I encourage you to start every single day of your life with Psalm chapter 118 and verse 24, which simply says, this is the day that the Lord has made. Remember, remember we're talking about today, right? Everyone say today. today. See, we're talking about today. These are the big rocks that need to be in our lives on a daily basis. This is the day, Angie, that the Lord has made. I make a choice of my will to be glad and what? Rejoice in it. Not complain in it, right? But to rejoice in it. Amen? Third, the third big rock. Third big rock. Did you say it need to be done by 12? Is that what you said? <laughs> Packers aren't playing today. Don't worry about it. <laughs> 
just kidding, just kidding, doing fine. Um, all right, number three, third big rock, third, third area to have in rhythm is the rhythm of responsibility. Rhythm of responsibility. These are some of the things that just sort of get, get forgotten. You know, it's like, what? No big deal. See, the rhythm of responsibility is about developing the habit of taking ownership. Everyone say ownership. Ownership of each day. See, it's being responsible. It's, being, it's taking ownership. See, there's many things in life that we, we have no control over, right? We have no control over traffic. Of course, you don't have traffic in New Glarus. <laughs> you think you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, remember, I remember one time we, you know, I'm, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and how many of you know we have traffic in Detroit, Michigan? And I had moved to the Upper Peninsula and planted four churches up there and then moved to Marshfield. I remember sitting in traffic in Marshfield. And uh, my wife, I said, I can't stand this traffic. My wife looked, looked at me and said, we've been in Marshfield too long. <laughs> <laughs> this is not traffic. <laughs> you know, there's so many things that we don't have any control over, like traffic or the weather. How many of you know this 90-some degree weather we're camping. We're in our camper right now while we're back up here. And, oh, man, it takes its toll. And, you know, so you got the weather. It's like, Lord, please let it drop 20 degrees. He's like, not happening, you know. <laughs> you know, so there's, but there's so many things that we don't have any control over. Um, but here's the deal. Way too often we obsess over the things we can't control, and we fail to take responsibility for the things we can control. And so God just wants you on a daily basis to own it. Did you hear me? Just take responsibility for it. And so just three quick little things that you can own. I could go on and on and on, but three quick little things is first, own your attitude. So own your attitude. Some of you woke up with a stinking attitude today. <laughs> right? You know, you need to check up from the neck up. It's like, what's going on here, right? Has anyone, does anyone ever have a funky attitude? <laughs> He's pointing at his wife back there. That will get you in trouble, brother. <laughs> and so own your attitude. Quit blaming it on everybody else, right? Just own it. You know, we... Raising our daughter used to give each other the ability to say attitude check. <laughs> and it would help us sort of go, yeah, you know what? It's not good right now. And I need to change that. And so uh, way too often we go by the way we feel and it affects our attitudes and it changes our attitude and it causes us to live life lower than God intended. Did you hear me? It's because your attitude. Stanford Research Institute um, says this, check this out, incredible uh, survey. They said 12% of the money you make comes from the knowledge that you possess. 88% comes from your attitude. See, so your attitude will get you that raise you've been begging for and thinking you deserve. Did you hear me? It's your attitude. Second, uh, own your schedule. Own your schedule. There's things that need to be in your schedule that you're not including because you don't own it. You're letting other people dictate to you what you should be doing with your life. There's a rhythm of life. There's a balance to life. And if you study the scriptures, and I don't have time to go into this in detail, but there's four things that you need to have included in your life. This is not a part of my message but it is now. <laughs> it's simply work, rest, worship, and play. Those are four things that every one of us need to have. Okay? And if you study the scripture, you'll see those pop out. Okay? And God wants, you, God wants you to learn how to play for some of you that don't know how to play. And some of you are way too serious and way too busy, and you're not playing. That'll burn you out. God wants some of you to learn how to worship and, 
and somehow to rest. Some of you need to learn how to rest, right? Yeah, I mean, some of you know how to work well, but you don't rest well, and so on and so forth. And so that's another time. I'll come back and talk about that, okay? <laughs> and here's what I found out. When your life is out of balance, you're like a, like a tire that's out of balance. You wobble. <laughs> you wobble. And, and there's a lot of wobbling Christians, right? <laughs> and so the, the third thing is real quick. Own your decisions. We're talking about the rhythm of responsibility here. Own your decisions. Own your decisions. Don't play the blame game. Make a decision on it. Don't, don't blame shift to your spouse, you know, or your coworker, or one of your family members. Own it, even if it makes you look bad. People respect that. Amen? Nobody respects someone who blame shifts or plays the blame game. If Adam hadn't been playing the blame game, we wouldn't be in that mess. <laughs> You know, it was the woman, remember? You know, he wasn't owning his decision. So, all right, so let's move on to the fourth big rock. All right, the fourth is to have in, in rhythm is the rhythm of generosity. The rhythm of generosity. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25 says this. Do we have that slide? Um. It says, a generous man will prosper, and he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. Now, let me ask you a question. What kind of a person prospers? Are you generous? I'm talking about the rhythm of generosity. Say. See, God so wants you to partner with him in this thing called generosity. Because he's laid out in Scripture the benefit of being generous. A generous man will be prosperous. And I'm not talking about just giving your tithes and offerings to the church. That's critically important, obviously. I'm talking about just living a life of generosity. Being a giver. Being someone who is generous. Galatians chapter 6 says this, verse 7 says, Do not be deceived, God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Did you hear me? A man reaps what he sows. And then it goes on to say, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, everyone say proper time, at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. There's always a proper time. Amen? Amen? Our job is to keep putting seed in the ground. Our job is to keep casting our bread upon the water. See? Our seeds out there. Our job is to keep planting our garden with being generous. And God will cause it to grow. And the harvest is coming. Notice, whatever a person plants, that's what he gets. Nothing more, nothing less. How many of you know everything must produce after its own kind? Yeah. Yeah, everything must produce after its own kind. As a matter of fact, um, in, in uh, Genesis chapter 8, verse 22, I don't know if you have that slide, it's the, it's the cycle of life that God has set up. Everyone say cycle of life. It says in, in Genesis 8, it says, as long as the earth remains. Anybody checked lately? It's still here. That means this still works. As long as the earth remains, there will be planting and harvest. Cold and heat. Oh, we know that. Summer and winter, day and night. Notice, seed, time, and harvest is a spiritual law. I like to call it, listen to this, I like to call it the law of the universe. It's the law of the universe. And the law of the universe says everything produces after its own kind. So, whatever you need, plant a seed. Pretty simple. I don't even know if you need corn, what do you do? You sit on the couch and say, I wish I had some corn. <laughs> no, you go plant a seed. Well, and you go to the grocery store, right? <laughs> and here's the deal. You got to catch this. I'm moving along, right? 
God was so brilliant when he set up this principle that would govern the universe. And here's, here's the principle in my own paraphrased version that he set up. He said this, if, John, if you want something, the way to give it, get it is to give it. John, if you want something, the way to get it is to give it. Isn't that amazing? That's, that's really the principle. Why? And why is that so important? Because it swims in the face of selfishness. And if there's one thing that God doesn't like, it's selfishness. If there's one thing that will destroy your life, it's selfishness. If there's one thing that will destroy your relationships, it's, help me now, selfishness. If there's one thing that will destroy your marriage, it's... And that's why... You know, you talk about uh, the way to get it is to give it. If you want to be loved, how many of you know you should love? Did you hear me? If you want to be respected, how many of you think you ought to be respectful? Pretty simple stuff, isn't it? I'm a simple guy. (laughs) But I love that principle because I know as a parent, I hate selfishness in my kid. You know, I'll never forget the time we were in Marshfield pastoring in, um, not Marshall, Marshfield, Wisconsin, okay, um, up there, and we went out to lunch with someone, and they hadn't arrived yet, we were at McDonald's, and um, we got her her Happy Meal, she was young, and uh, she was eating her food, and dad reached over and grabbed a french fry off her plate, and she said, dad, those are mine! I thought I'd brought you into the world. I'll take you out. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? It's like, first of all, I bought those French fries. With my hard-earned money. <laughs> you did nothing but just arrive on this planet. And you've cost me ever since. <laughs> Not that I was complaining or anything, because I have a heart of gratitude, right? <laughs> But I, I'll never forget, I thought, listen, girl, you know, I have enough money in my wallet right now to go buy you a thousand, hundred, whatever, <laughs> orders of French fries, ten probably at that time, yeah. <laughs> That's why we were at McDonald's. <laughs> and, and it was like, what are you doing? I'm the source, Right? I'm the source of, of your humanity right now and your existence, right? And, and you're trying to be stingy with me? And we played the same thing with God. I'm the source here. And you're, you're trying to get stingy with me? Homie, don't play that. <laughs> no, okay? And so it's the, it's the principle, it's the rhythm of generosity, Find someone to be generous to every single day of your life and add something to their lives. Add value. Sometimes it's in the form of a kind word. Sometimes it's helping them change a tire. Sometimes it's taking care of some, somebody's kids while they go out on a date night. Sometimes it's paying the utility bill. Sometimes it's giving an extra gift in the offering. Some, it, it could take out any form or fashion. Just learn to have a heart of generosity in your life. Be a giver. Be a giver. Luke chapter 16 says this. Verse 10 says, Whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. And whoever is dishonest with very little will also be dishonest with much. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling what? Worldly wealth. Who, can tr- who will trust you with true riches? Notice, notice it's a trust issue. Did you hear me? It's a trust issue. Vicki and I have been blessed to have literally millions and millions of dollars go through our fingers, our, our hands. Not that we've had that as an, a wage, but 
managing the finances of our local churches. Large and small, from 100 to 4,500 people. So we've literally had millions and millions of dollars that we were responsible to manage. And one of the reasons why I believe God has allowed us to do that is he knows he can trust us. One of the reasons why I know he wants us to do this new ministry and he'll provide every need we have is because he knows he can trust us not to misuse or abuse those resources. It's a trust issue. Can I ask you a question today? Can God trust you? Can God trust you? And the fifth big rock is the rhythm of forgiveness. The rhythm of forgiveness. This affects every single one of us in this room today. <laughs> we all have issues with forgiveness and unforgiveness. We all have things that get stuck, right? You know, we like to think of ourselves as forgivers, but sometimes things get stuck. Every single day of our lives, we have a choice to make, either forgive people or hold on to an offense that occurs in our lives. We, we look at our lives different than we look at others' lives. We tend to look at our lives and our mistakes through a telescope and others' mistakes through a microscope. It's just the way we live our lives, the way we do things. And, and here's what I found. People make mistakes. Sometimes they'll say or do things that hurt us. And when, we, when they do, we have a choice to make. We need to learn how to let it go. Did you hear me? Everyone say, let it go. Let it go. Can you say it one more time? Let it go. Now, can you say it with an attitude? Let it go. Come on, let it go. <laughs> Come on, let's say that with me. Humor me. Let it go. Come on, get some, get some phlegm in your throat with me. Here. Come on, one, two, three. Let it go. <laughs> See, you need to learn how to let it go, right? And, and, we don't, let, don't let grudges and unforgiveness drive a wedge between you and your relationships. Don't do it. Don't do it. You say, but yeah, this was different. No, it wasn't. I know it feels that way. But it wasn't. Amen? Amen. We tend to judge ourselves by our intentions and others by their actions. You know, if we intended to forgive someone, but really didn't, <laughs> We, and they just didn't quite get there. We judge them differently, right? Learn to be unoffendable. Just, just learn to be unoffendable. Don't take, don't take offense. Choose not to take offense. John Bevere, how many of you ever heard of John Bevere? So he's actually our neighbor now that we live in College Springs. He lives right across the field from our house. And uh, so I try to offend him the, all the time. Uh, but he says that when we take offense, it's what? It's what? It's the bait. It's the bait of Satan. Yeah, don't take the bait. I, I mean, I don't know if you ever fished, but there's times when I'm fishing and I've got that worm right in front of that dude's mouth, you know, and Vicki and I were in Alaska fishing, and we got the things going on right in front of their face, and they're like, not taking it. I'm not taking it. We'd hit him on the note and not taking it. Be as smart as a fish, will you? <laughs> Don't take the bait. Amen? I mean, forgiveness should be at the very heart of the Christian life, right? It's, it's, we have no problem with the concept. All of us would agree that forgiveness should be at the very heart and should be given. Forgiven people ought to be what? Forgiving. Forgiven people ought to be for giving, okay? And so it's easy to talk about, it's harder to do. There's no doubt about it. As someone once said, he who refuses to forgive others burns down the very bridge that he himself must walk over someday. Don't burn the bridge down. You're going to need it someday, amen? Don't do it. 
And some people look at forgiveness as something for weakness, weak people or sissies or wimps. But the fact is that forgiveness is the strongest thing, strongest thing we can do. It's easy to walk in unforgiveness, isn't it? Yeah, it's easy. It's hard to let people off the hook that have hurt us. And so God wants you and I to have that built into the rhythm of our lives, that big rock of forgiveness. You know, there's a, there's a story in the Bible, and I'll close with this, that um, Stephen and Jesus sort of did the same thing. They forgave people who were putting them to death. How many remember the story? And Steve, I mean, you know, when Jesus does it, we're like, well, he's the son of God. <laughs> Stephen does it, it's like, whoa, <laughs> how could he do that, right? But here's what I believe is, I believe that, that Stephen's forgiveness of Saul opened up the door for God to mess with the man on the road to Damascus to become the apostle Paul. Forgiveness releases the power of God to get involved. Did you know that? To get involved with people's lives that need a transformation and need to change. Forgiveness is critical. Listen, years ago... Um, when I was a little boy, about three years old, my father ran off with another woman. And my brother and I and my sister were left with a single mom in the middle of the winter with no heat, no food. And it was a miserable, you know, probably 10 years, eight years of barely getting along. Food stamps, the whole deal. Until she met my stepfather. And that helped some. But my brother got so bitter over that event that he said, the moment I turn 18, I'm changing my last name. I'm no longer going to be Smith, which I'm Glenn Smith. He was my brother, is my brother. I'm changing it to Sakriska, my, my stepdad's name. He's my dad. I'm gonna, I'll show him. And he was bitter. He's a believer. Loves the Lord with all his heart. And one day, we were talking and he was going off about my dad. And I had developed a great relationship with him and was building it more and more, trying, trying to win him to the Lord, obviously, and speaking life into him. And I looked at my brother one day and I said, Alan, when are you going to forgive dad? And he said, I don't know if I'll ever forgive him. That, he hurt me. And I said, brother, who knows? Listen to me now. Who knows? You may be the very person that God uses to lead him to Jesus. Well, something stuck on the inside. And I could tell over the next several years, he started to let it go. Everyone say, let it go. Let it go. And he decided to let it go. Several years went by, and out of the blue, I get a phone call. Pick up the line, and I hear, praise the Lord, brother. I said, who is this? He said, it's your dad, you idiot. <laughs> I said, are you drunk? <laughs> and he said, now listen to me. He said, no, I'm at your brother's house, and he just led me to Jesus. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Amen? <laughs> See, forgiveness opens up the door for God to mess with people. When you hold on to unforgiveness, you, you block the door. And God wants your doors open. Amen. Let's stand to our feet today. Unforgiveness always releases the power of death. Hear me now. Forgiveness always releases the power of life. God wants you to live in the life zone, not the the death zone. We have the worship team come. I know I've gone just a couple minutes over and I apologize for that. But I believe that somewhere tucked in this message today, God has some real powerful stuff for you.
to change your life. It may sound simple, but it's profound. It's the Word. And the Word of God has the power to change everything. Amen? Amen. And these are just principles of God. Yeah, the law of gratitude. The principle of gratitude. The principle of living in a renewed state. His mercies are what? New. The gift of a new day. The gift of newness of life. The, the, the rhythm of responsibility. Of owning your life. And not blame shifting. The rhythm of generosity. Of always being a giver. Always being generous. My grandfather probably never made more than eight to ten thousand dollars a year in his life, but he always had enough change in his pocket to buy someone a cup of coffee or a meal. Always, he always had enough money to send my siblings and me to church camp every year. And that's where I surrendered my life to the Lord, and God called me into the ministry because He was generous. Who, who's waiting on the other side of your generosity? Who? Father, I pray for my friends here today. I pray for this church. I pray that your hand would rest upon each and every person. And God, that they wouldn't just chalk this up as just another Sunday went to church, met some people, talked, sung some songs, heard some guy talk. Just another Sunday. God, that you would use the words that you have anointed to change lives today. Sometimes it's just a simple adjustment. Sometimes it's just going back to things we've already known and believed and operated in. Whatever that might look like, God, you know. And I pray that each person take it serious enough to, to lay before you and say, God, what are you saying to me today? Today. Today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. Today, the next 24 hours, not next year, not last year, today. I'm going to invite the prayer team to come forward, the pastoral team, just to pray with anyone who wants prayer on a personal basis. God, I pray, I pray that you'll do your work. As we sing this, this last song together, this closing song, I pray that you'll continue to massage hearts and do what only you can do. Change lives today, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Glenn. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I could get some of the uh, prayer teams from Synergy to come and pray as well, some of the elders. Uh, and just, uh, if the Lord puts it on your heart, if you want to bless Glenn and his wife Vicki this morning, um, we do have a bucket at the door to the left there and uh, one up here as well. So uh, let's close in worship. And if you need prayer, please come on up.